My full English name is Roberta Felice, and my Hebrew name is Rivka Fegeba Chavalea. I was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1964. I am kind of a first-generation American. My parents were barely first-generation Americans, and my grandparents were Holocaust survivors. My mother's family immigrated to Argentina in the early 20s and finally ended up in New York via my mother's mother and my grandfather. On my mother's side was from Poland, as were my father's parents. My father's parents were socialist communists whose grandparents were ultra-Orthodox um, Jews. My grandfather on my mother's side was a Nevratic yeshiva scholar. For those people who don't know what the Nevratic yeshiva is, it's the big Musa yeshiva that was founded by Rabbi Yisrael Salanter in Europe. Salanter? Salanter. Yes, Rabbi Yisrael. I know that name. Yes. Um, my mother's mother, whose name was Sarah, changed it to Stella because she wanted to be Americanized as soon as she hit America from Argentina. I grew up in ultra-Orthodox synagogues with people who had numbers on their arms, very, very attached to the Holocaust, listening at the holiday tables to people arguing about what was going on in the state of Israel and how we had to only vote for people who supported Israel. That's my recollection of growing up. I grew up in a little bit of an insulated world. I grew up as a very observant Orthodox Jew who went to public school. Both of my parents have um, college degrees. They were the first in their family to get college degrees. And from the beginning, I remember feeling different. I was in public school, and I could only wear skirts. I was taken out not only for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and Simchat Torah and Sukkot, but Shavuos and the first days and the last days of Pesach and everything. I always felt just a little bit different. And I didn't feel so different in Brooklyn, but when we moved to New Jersey, then I really felt different because I didn't want to be different. I wanted to fit in. But I knew that I was different, and I knew that we were Jewish, and I somehow knew that there was some sort of importance in it. For anyone who knows, and if, if you don't, I'll tell you, my parents now live in a place called Lakewood, New Jersey, which is the biggest yeshiva town in the United States. My family is also black, black hats. Um, when I go, one of my most favorite things to do when I go visit my mother, which I do often, and interestingly enough, I feel like when I'm going there, I go home, is I walk into her synagogue where the women are wearing black shirts with black sweaters, with black skirts, with black tights, and I go in wearing orange. <laughs> and my mother puts her arm around me and goes, this is my daughter, the one who lives in California. <laughs> it took me a long time to find my place in both worlds, and I still don't know if I have. I think it's an ongoing journey. My, my experiencing growing up was I had a tremendous, tremendous connection to being a Jew. And I had a tremendous resentment towards the fact of that it made me different. And I never really told anyone that. And I, my best friends growing up were Italian, and I had to bring my own food and Tupperware to their house to eat because we kept a very strict level of kosher. Um, I did exactly what wasn't expected of me. I went to college and was a dancer. I was a professional dancer until I was 34 years old. I did jazz, modern ballet, tap, musical theater, and then finally Israeli and Greek folk dance. My experience of being in the performing world as a Jew who kept Shabbos was really interesting. My experience of being a Jew who kept kosher no matter what was also really interesting, even though my level of kosher has definitely changed over the years. You know, for years and years I was a vegetarian because then I didn't have to worry about it. And you know what? It really worked for me. And, and that, that was really important for me to learn, that I could find things that worked for me. Um, when I was 21, I met my husband, my first husband. I've been married for 19 years of my adult life, just not to the same person. <laughs> and when I was 21, I met my first husband, who wasn't a Jew, and we got married. And we were together for 10 years, and we lived a very interestingly crazy religious Jewish life. I met him through another organization that we were involved in, and it was probably one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Very, very few people who know me in my world today know that I was married to a non-Jew for 10 years, and they go, you? Yes, me, Kevin Korsgaard. So then I was Roberta Korsgaard because I wasn't going by Roby then. And then um, Kevin and I, um, our marriage ended after 10 years. And a few years later, I married a Romanian-Israeli man named Alex Lodiano. There goes my third last name. Um, my maiden name is Methan. And I lived in Israel with him for, for many years. And he was a very 
modern Orthodox Israeli. And when I was living in Israel, I just kind of re, re embraced the ultra Orthodox part of myself. And I spent a lot of time in the Rova, and I spent a lot of time in, in Jerusalem, and I spent a lot of time in the Old City. And I, I spent a lot of time davening, praying at the Kotel, at the wall, and really feeling that connection. Because you see, for me, being chosen and being Jewish and being religious and all that stuff really means absolutely nothing. The only thing that matters to me is if any of that allows me to have a relationship with God that works. And for me, a relationship with God that works, this is for me, is one in where my life is about basically two things. Chesed, doing loving kindness, actually three things. Don look up judging other people favorably, and having my life be meaningful. I ended up here and I walked into the Orthodox synagogue in Palo Alto, and similar to what some people have said, I had to prove that I was really from, you know. It wasn't I had to prove that I was Jewish, but I wasn't about Shuva, and I don't necessarily dress black, you know. I have an education, I have two master's degrees. One is in dance movement therapy and one is in exercise physiology. I have an undergraduate degree in theater, dance, and English. I speak five languages, including Hebrew. I've lived in eight countries, except for the, not including the United States. I don't have a very linear path, you know? <laughs> it's just not a straight line. So I got to a point in my life where I don't want to be to this extreme. This extreme doesn't work for me. I certainly don't want to be to this extreme because for me, I can't, I can't breathe there. So I can't breathe in either one of these. So my path as being an observant, educated, as it says in the little bio about me, networked um, Jewish woman is really about finding balance, about finding balance and about finding meaning. If I'm going to be in this world and I'm going to judge people favorably because I want them to judge me favorably because who the heck would know any of that stuff that I just told you looking at me? You know, people in my office come up to me and they go, I'm so sorry you have to wear long sleeves in the summer. Really, let me tell you something. Being religious has nothing to do with wearing long sleeves in the summer. Absolutely nothing. I choose to dress how I choose to dress. That's, you know, me. It has to do with, like, what goes on inside and with my, you know, with, with making a difference. And since my whole life I was conditioned to be told, you get married, you have kids, this is what you do, and this is what you do as a Jewish woman, as a Jewish person, being divorced three times without children and going to visit my mother in Lakewood, both of my parents, thank God, wearing orange, doesn't exactly fit into, this, you know, into the image. And it's been really interesting. I don't work in the Jewish community by choice. I worked in it by chance. And it's been a very wonderful chance. I really ended up by chance getting a job at the JCC, this JCC, before we were actually in this building, when we were still in the trailers. And I've gotten to experience the growth of the Jewish community in a way that I actually never got to experience because I wasn't actually part of this kind of Jewish community. <coughs> I was involved in youth organizations. I was involved in B'nai B'rith. I was involved in NCSY. I was involved in more Orthodox Jewish organizations. But I was never involved in such a diverse culture. And so here I am. And I sit in a pretty important place. You know, I sit right outside the CEO's office. The joke is I run the place. Don't tell Alan I said that. <laughs> and, um, and what can I do? What am I doing? What is my presence? Does it mean anything? Does it bring any meaning here? And these are the questions I ask myself. These are the things that I ask myself when I wake up in the morning. These are the things that I wonder. I say modani. I thank God that I can breathe. Sometimes I don't say anything else, and sometimes I Dabin, you know, Shachris, you know, Michel Marv. It depends on the day. But what's, what's really important to me is if I can make every day a day where I can do something meaningful. The way I choose to practice that, it's really kind of very simple. It's not very complicated and it's not very glamorous. I try and do one thing for somebody every day to help them out without letting them know. But now you know my secret. <laughs> um, and I guess some days I'm successful and some days I'm not. I try and be really grateful for the gifts of what comes to me, the gifts of the people who are in my life, both in the Jewish community and out of the Jewish community. Some of my best friends are not Jewish. Some of my best friends are born again radical Christians. <laughs> um, some of my best friends are atheists. So I'm really grateful that I grew up at least in a family that was open-minded about that because I, I see some problems in the religious world with that. I really do. I think in, this is what I'm gonna say in closing, 
Um, for me, as an Orthodox networked, evolved Jewish woman who celebrates Shabbat, who keeps the holidays, who keeps kashrut, and who finds meaning in that, and who has nieces and nephews who basically get a lot out of me because I don't have my own children, so they get all the money that I would spend on them. Um, I hope that just my being in the world in the way I am as an Orthodox Jewish woman can help make a difference and help other people know that there could be meaning in all sorts of ways. And I'm very grateful, and thank you for having me. Sure.